Hey guys, the day has finally arrived. We're going to assemble our big bore CRF motor right now. Hey guys, it is Brian and I am back in the garage again today. Super important video where we have taken this completely roached out CRF 70 motor from this to this. And I tell you what, it has been quite a process to get here. But this motor, it looks absolutely stunning. And not only does it look good, it's going to run good because we have boarded out, we have stroked it using parts from the T-Bolt USA parts bin. We have macked this thing out completely. So I guarantee you it's going to run as good as it looks. And by the way, if you are wanting to trick out your pit bike like we've done in this video, you got to give the guys over at T-Bolt USA a call and check them out or look them up online at tboltusa.com. They have everything that you need for your mini. They have tricked us out on this deal with engine parts, suspension parts, all kinds of cool stuff that you're also going to see on some upcoming videos. One thing I want to mention too is that uh, if you need to learn about bearings and seal installation, I've done a completely separate video on that. So if you need to go over those procedures before you start building your motor, this is the place to look. So I've got a link to that up here. So go check that out. The motor is different, but the processes are exactly the same. This video is a little bit long and I tried my best to compress it as much as I could, but there's a lot to cover on a four stroke engine build. There's timing, there's a head, there's a lot to go over. So I did my best to compress it, but because it's so long, I went ahead and as usual added timestamps into the description so that you can you know, move around if you need to, go to other clips, move around in the video as much as you like so I can save you some time so you don't have to dig through looking for any particular clip. So timestamps are in the description. Also. All of the tools and supplies that I've used in this video, I also have links for those in the description for you as well. And I have to just go ahead and tell you, now that this site is commercialized, we do possibly make a small commission off of some of the things that the links show you in the description. So just in the interest of full disclosure, I do not recommend things that I don't use, but we may make a small commission off of those. One other thing, and that is that we have converted this motor in the process of this build from a centrifugal clutch to a four speed clutch, but I built this thing up using basically the centrifugal clutch, but you may see some clips from this four speed clutch kind of mixed in a little bit. So don't be surprised if you see a little bit of different clutch configurations while you're going through this build. All right, with that, I wanna show you how I took this piece of coal and turned it into a diamond. So let's pick up some wrenches and go to work. All right, so let's tear into this thing. So first we're gonna install the guide sprocket and you don't have to use thread locker on this, but if you do, make sure that both the male and the female threads are very clean or the thread locker will not adhere. So insert the guide spindle through the crankcase, then thread it into the guide sprocket. And by the way, the service manual gives no instruction on the torque spec for this. And I don't know a better way to hold it than using this rag, so that's how I've done it. All right, so starting with the left crankcase half, oil the crankshaft bearing bore like this. And make sure you orient the rod so that it falls into the cutout where the cylinder is gonna install later. If you need to know how to rebuild your transmission, I did an extensive video on that here. Transmission washers are always falling off, so to keep that from happening, I grease the ends and then install washers. The washers are directional, which is also covered in detail in that transmission video. Grease the lip of the countershaft oil seal before you install the transmission. To keep the transmission assembly from falling apart, I tie strap everything together before installing it. With the Kickstarter spindle, again, grease the end and then seat the shaft after you align this friction spring with this little cutout in the case. So there's a washer at the top of this assembly, so just make sure that you save that and then it's reinstalled. Before we close up the crankcase, it's a good idea to just give the shifting operation a little check. All right, big step, mating the case half. So I like to start by just checking the gasket alignment. Then with some assembly lube, lightly grease the gasket. Clean the mating surfaces and then install the gasket.
coat the dowel pins with some anti-seize and this stuff is like chewing gum in your hair. So just be careful with it and try to keep your fingers off of it. You may have to tap in the dowel pins a little bit to seat them. Clean the mating surfaces on the right side crankcase half and then lube the bearing board just like you did on the other side. Before you drop the other case half on, make sure to lube up the transmission really liberally. And so now the fun part, just line up the crankcase half and press it home. Now to install these killer bolts from Specbolt. The way that I keep track of bolts is I measure each one when I remove them and I just make a note of which hole they go into. This front one needs the car breather tube guide installed, so just don't forget that. Tighten all the fasteners and then torque them in a crisscross pattern to nine Newton meters or 6.5 foot pounds. Secure the shift drum by installing this bolt and tightening it to 12 Newton meters or nine foot pounds. And this is one bolt where the correct torque is really important to ensure good shifting later. Install the cam chain by guiding it around the sprocket on the crank and then aligning it over this guide sprocket. Align the guide wheel of the cam chain tensioner with the cam chain and then install this pivot bolt. Tighten that to 16 Newton meters or 12 foot pounds. So I'm gonna slow down just a little bit to go over this tensioner assembly in a little bit of detail and you'll understand why in a minute. So this is the ceiling bolt, the ceiling washer, And this is the tensioner spring that has two distinct ends. The less tightly wound butts up to the ceiling bolt like this. Then we have the tensioner rod that has this black plastic head cap at one end. And then this open end. The open end receives a more tightly wound end of the tensioner spring like this. So this is how it all goes together. So first, install the tensioner rod followed by the tensioner spring, and then the ceiling bolt and washer. So here's why we took this a little bit slow. This is the oil drain bolt, which is often confused with the tensioner ceiling bolt we just installed. So if one day you're attempting to drain the oil from your crankcase and this happens, no need to panic. Just find all the parts that flew out and reinstall everything in the order that you just saw and you're good to go. Finally, pour in a little bit of oil through this crankcase ceiling bowl and tighten the bolt. Starting with the stator base, drop in the stator assembly and then orient all the wires. Install the bolts using Loctite if you like and then tighten the bolts. Line up the ignition pulse generator onto this perch and then install and tighten the bolts. Install this wire clamp. Slip on this big O-ring around the perimeter of the stator base and then grease the lip of the oil seal. Grease these recesses to hold the small O-rings that we'll be installing. Then wipe a bit of assembly lube on the interface between the big O-ring and the crankcase. Insert the little O-rings. Then install the stator assembly and tighten it down firmly with a number three Phillips screwdriver. Insert the grommet into the cutout in the case. Next, to make it easier to install the flywheel later, I like to orient the Woodruff key to the top. 
If your chain comes off and breaks off one of these tabs or both, the simple fix is to remove the stator base with the stator attached and then replace the whole thing with a new one. So remove the outer cover and flywheel as shown in this video here. Remove the number three Phillips screws. And if these screws are reluctant to come out, use an impact driver like this one to break them loose. Remove the entire stator assembly as one unit, then replace the entire assembly with a new one like this one you can get from T-Bolt USA, and I'll put a link for this in the description. Then reinstall the number three Phillips head fasteners. So this is the Woodruff key. And it lines up with this notch on the flywheel. To me, the best way to do this is to look down the center line of the crank like it's a gun barrel and then line up the key with the groove in the flywheel and just slide it on. Install the flywheel nut and then using a flywheel holder, torque the nut to 41 newton meters or 30 foot pounds. The kickstart return assembly consists of this return spring, the spring retainer, and a snap ring. One end of the spring wraps around the right side of the spring retainer. The other end needs to be pulled around this boss that sits proud of the interior of the crankcase hat. It does not take a lot of force to locate the spring in, just a smooth, consistent pull using the appropriate tool. With that done, seat the retainer, then install the snap ring. All right, so I wanna pop in here real quick and go over one area of installation of motor components that can significantly contribute to the shifting quality, and that is the installation of the shift drum, and it has fasteners on both sides. So we're done with this ignition side, so let me show you what we got going on here. So on this side, we have the shift drum. So on either side of the shift drum, there are these fasteners. On the ignition side, there's a bolt that secures the drum to the case half, and we've installed it earlier and tightened it to 12 Newton meters or nine foot pounds. On this side, there's a shift cam plate that has to be secured after installing several of these little dowel pins. Install the dowel pins and align them to the shift cam plate. So once those are in place, torque this bolt to 17 Newton meters or 12 foot pounds. Now install the gear shift spindle and align this return spring with the crankcase stopper pin. Next install the stopper arm and this needs to be installed correctly with the spring as you see in the picture. If you don't do this right, you're not going to have good shifting. So torque the stopper arm pivot bolt down to 13 newton meters or 9 foot pounds. Now you can go back to the other side and install the shift drum bolt cover. Okay, so with the linkage installed, all the ancillaries on either side of the drum tightened to specification, this is a very good time to go ahead and check the shift function. So there's two ways you can do that. One, you can either counter rotate this main shaft or you can rotate the output shaft on the opposite side in the direction of the travel of the chain, which to me is a little bit easier for you to see on camera. So rotating the output shaft. So, all right, so if you do all these procedures correctly, especially the torquing of these bolts on either side of the drum and the stopper arm, if all those are installed correctly and torqued to specification, the chance of you having a shifting problem are greatly diminished. So let's go ahead and move on to the oil pump. That's the next step. If you're building up a high performance motor or a big bore motor, you need to watch this video on installing a high volume oil pump. When installing the oil pump, start by installing this rotor shaft collar. Then make sure that the end of the guide spindle aligns with the notch on the back of the oil pump. Install a new gasket. Then torque the screws to five Newton meters or 3.6 foot pounds. 
Install this tapered collar onto the crankshaft with the smaller diameter end facing you. Next, install the driven gear onto the main shaft and install the snap ring. Next, install the clutch center guide onto the crankshaft, and then the primary drive gear. Install the clutch assembly onto the crankshaft by aligning the splines. The drive gear must seat inside of the clutch center like this. There are two lock washers to install when installing the clutch. The first is this castellated 14 millimeter lock washer. The other is this cupped lock washer, which should be installed with the word outside facing you. Install the lock nut with the four notches. When you tighten the lock nut, you have to keep the clutch from spinning. To do this, I prefer to wedge a flange nut between the larger driven gear and the small drive gear like this. On this lock nut, you may have to torque it a little bit more than specified in order to get this tab to align so that you can bend it up into one of the lock nut notches. Using a new gasket, install the clutch outer cover in the center bearing and then tighten the whole thing down to six Newton meters or 4.3 foot pounds. The gear shift actuator assembly consists of the cam lifter plate, the spring and oil through, the ball retainer, the cam lifter plate spring, and the lifter lever. Install the cam lifter plate, then install the spring into the oil through and install both as an assembly. Balance the spring on the end of the cam lifter plate like this. Then carefully install the ball retainer over the spring and insert the lifter lever onto the shift spindle and press it home. So here's one you will not find in the service manual. Install a new oil strainer located just above the oil drain. The components in this cover consist of this clutch lifter plate and this washer, O-ring, and a nut that make up the adjuster. When installing the lifter plate, make sure this pin ends up inside of this boss. Feed the center of the lifter through, then flip the case over. Install the O-ring, washer, and adjuster nut. Then tighten the nut while restraining the adjuster. Even though this isn't shown, I grease this gasket also. Install the two dowel pins, Finally, install the right crankcase cover fasteners and torque them to four Newton meters or 3.3 foot-pounds. And finally, we are done with the bottom end. If you have any questions about ring installation or orientation, I discuss that in great detail in this video. Orient the circlet so that once it's installed, it does not line up with this cutout. Then install the left circlet into the circlet groove. Apply some assembly lube to the wrist pin and insert it until it butts up to the installed circlet. Pack the area under the piston and timing chain with a clean cloth. Then install the second circlip to lock the wrist pin into the bore. I like to take the old wrist pin and press the circlip home until you hear it click. Before installing the cylinder, coat these two 12 millimeter long dowel pins with some anti-seize and seat them. Feed the timing chain through the new gasket and align the gasket. Install the oil passage seal. Lube the piston and cylinder with assembly lube. It's hard to show how to get the cylinder over the rings, but just take your time. Compress the rings and then gently work the cylinder over each ring. Once you get past the final ring, feed the timing chain through the cylinder. Then seat the cylinder over the two dial pins. Install, but don't firmly tighten the cylinder mounting bolt. Install and align the cam chain guide roller. Insert the pivot bolt and then torque it down to 10 Newton meters or seven foot pounds. The cylinder head consists of the cam shaft, two rocker arm shafts, rocker arms, adjusters, tappet covers, cam cover, and this right side cover. Orient the valve adjusters so that they look like this and then install them into the rocker arms. Next, locate the rocker arm into the cylinder head like this, then thread the rocker arm onto an eight millimeter bolt drop some assembly lube on it and pass it through the rocker arm like this. Then do the same for the other rocker arm. Next is the camshaft. Start by lubing the outer bearing races and cam lobes with some assembly lube. Orient the lobes downward and press the cam into the bore. If you're installing an OEM head gasket, install this metal collar and surrounding seal as shown and locate the 14 millimeter dowel pins into these two bores. If you're installing a big bore kit like I am, be aware that the supplied topping gasket kit has a lot of gaskets and seals that you're not gonna use. Also, there are two green seals in here and only the larger green seal is gonna be used on the cylinder head. The relief cut into the cylinder is larger than the outside diameter of the seal that goes in here, but the gasket is held captive by the head gasket. Unlike the OEM head gasket, on a big bore cylinder, there is an extra seal that goes here. And locate the 14 millimeter dowel pins into these two bores. 
I'm just going to add a little bit of gasket maker to support the seal just a little more. After feeding the timing chain through, we can slide the cylinder head onto the studs. I put a little tie strap loosely around the timing chain so it's easier to feed it. Loosely install the cylinder head mounting bolt. On the right side cover, install a new gasket, install the bolts, and torque each down to 10 newton meters or 7 foot pounds. The service manual does not give a torque spec for these two bolts, but for this type of fastener, a spec of 16 newton meters or 12 foot pounds of force is recommended. On the cylinder head cover, orient this arrow to point downward. Install the three metal washers. Then on this stud, use the special copper washer. Install the nuts. Then in a crisscross pattern, torque them all down to 11 newton meters or eight foot pounds. Finally, install new seals into the top and bottom tappet covers and then snug them down and we're almost done. All right, so we've got the cylinder head on. Now we are going to go to the final step, which is setting the timing. All right, so setting the timing is really simple. So start by rotating the flywheel counterclockwise to this point where the T and this hash mark lines up next to this indexing mark on the crankcase. Next, while holding the chain, slide in the cam sprocket and what you want to do is align this circular mark with this indexing mark on the cylinder head so you may have to change where the chain falls on the cam sprocket to get the two aligned just right next install this 12 millimeter long dowel pin align the threaded holes in the camshaft with the sprocket and then install the camshaft sprocket bolts then tighten those to 9 newton meters or 6.5 foot pounds Install a new gasket and align this left side cover tab on this side of the stopper, just like you see here. Then secure the cover by installing the sealing washer and tightening the bolt. Finally, install the left side crankcase cover and install the three mounting bolts and tighten those. All right, with that, we are done. The timing is set. The motor is completely done. I cannot believe how great this thing turned out. I'm so excited to kick it over, man. I'm ready to start it. So, uh, hey, I just want to tell you guys uh, the upcoming video that we have after this one's going to include things like how to uh, change this from a automatic clutch to a manual clutch. We're also going to have a video on how to set up the carburetor, other things like adjusting the clutch, uh, priming the motor, lots of things to come on that. So if you think that it's a better fit for you to just go ahead and subscribe so you can follow along with a series i'm obviously happy if you do and if you have a comment to make about it as long as it's nice i'm glad to hear that too so i hope that you got something from this i hope it helps somebody out there thanks so much to everybody that watches and subscribes and have fun in your garage